This video is somewhat of a follow-up to the recent videos I've done testing the same exact methodology where I tested the 7700K, the 7820X and the 1800X, obviously the best of their respective platforms in a stock comparison. Now I did have a lot of comments for people saying you should have tested the, you know, the 1700 and the 1600 and so that's what this video is. We're going to be doing the exact same tests on player Unknown's Battlegrounds, uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive and GTA 5. I'm running three at uh, five minute benchmarks or 300 second benchmarks multiple times per run but if you want to hear all about the methodology check out the video uh, for the 7700K, 7820X and the 1800X that will be linked up above and in the cards at the end. Now I've got a couple predictions here. I expect what's going to happen is the 1600 is going to be a little bit faster in most games thanks to its 3.4 gigahertz base clock versus the 1700's 3 gigahertz. Now of course I could overclock these but I want to make it clear that the majority of people who buy these CPUs even though they are overclockable don't overclock them so the stock benchmark results are going to be as seen here I may do a future video overclocking both of them to as far as I can push them and see how that goes as well and let me know if you're interested in that in the comments down below but for the time being these are the stock results as I said with the 3 gigahertz clock speed on the 1700 I expect it to be a little bit slower than the 1600 in average just you know general gaming but when it comes to streaming I expect that it will pull a little bit ahead just thanks to those two extra cores. So without further ado, let's take a look at the results. Starting off with CSGO, as you can see on the averages, the 1600 does pull a little bit ahead on the normal results, whereas in streaming it's actually a little bit behind. It's still a fairly close race and there is a significant performance difference here, 49 and 41% uh, respectively, so a pretty big difference and you also notice it in the minimums and the 5% maximums as well, and I did really notice a difference while actually playing and streaming my Itself. This is still perfectly playable, obviously you're still up over 200 FPS for the majority of the time and about 100 to 150 when streaming, but it is something to note. When it comes to GTA 5, this was also pretty noticeable, although it's actually again pretty closely tied. I think GTA 5 quite does like extra cores here versus uh, clock speed, but also does like clock speed, so the balance of two extra cores but lower clock speed versus two less cores but higher clock speed kind of balances them out quite evenly. When it comes to Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, this is also kind of what I expected, where the 1600 is about 10 FPS faster than the 1700 in just normal results, but about 10 FPS slower on streaming, which means that the there's actually a 46% performance difference with the 1600 versus only about 30% or 27% with the 1700. Overall, these are still both fantastic chips, but of course, if you are not planning to overclock, then I do recommend going for the 1800X or even the 1700X at the 8 core price point. These results were actually pretty surprising to me. I wasn't expecting such a large jump in performance difference between the 1800X and the 1700 from what I've seen. The results aren't directly comparable, as especially stuff like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds has had uh, fairly major updates, and of course, just general optimization since it's been a couple, uh, about a month or so since I've actually ran the results so there has actually been some decent performance improvements on Ryzen thanks to updates as well so uh, but it's just it's quite surprising I wasn't expecting that much of a difference of course these chips are still fantastic and of course if you do overclock them I expect you would get significantly better results but for the time being uh, these are the, the results that I have if you've got any questions about the testing or anything else let me know in the comments down below and if you have a Ryzen CPU let me know down below too which one you have and what your uh, you know what your experience has been like be interested to hear from people who are using it who aren't you know regularly testing them on pretty much everything but otherwise uh, yeah I'd be interested to hear from you otherwise there's videos over here including the 7700k 7820x and 1800x testing video uh, and feel free to check out the 1700 versus 7700k in just player unknowns battlegrounds as well so yeah, got a fair few videos for you. Other than that, uh, if you want to support me because this video did take me a very long time I think it took a total of about a week of testing, uh, like straight up full full days of testing, uh, to actually get all of this working and sorted and get reliable results that I can actually share with you. So if you want uh, to you know, keep seeing these videos, keep me doing this sort of stuff, then please do use the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below. They do genuinely help me out. There's also a Bitcoin wallet if you're interested, and there's a merchandise link in there if you, as well if you want a nice t-shirt, hoodie, or anything else. Other than that, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to check out some of the other ones that are over here. And of course, feel free to subscribe if you aren't already. Uh, and as I said, uh, leave, me note, leave me a note in the comments down below. But otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next video.